buckets here. Okay, so this, this is yeah over there. So if we um, let me see if I go out of this. Okay, liturgy, Ashkenaz, weekly prayer, weekday, Shachrit, the Amida. Okay, this is actually a nice way to look at the Amida that we have patriarchs, etc., etc. Cetera, et cetera. These are all the different brachas. And now the last three, the last three brachas, that's where we're up to, is um, temple service, thanksgiving, and peace. If you are in a minion, if you're part of a minion, so then um, what they do is after the thanksgiving, they do the birkat koanim. The blessing of the Kohanim. Um, when the, the, the Kohanim go up and they say, Yivarechecha Hashem v'yishmarecha, um, that is part of the that's part of the prayer service, but it's... Um, Just a person. Oh, who could be calling? Okay, okay. Um, it's part of the prayer service, but we don't... It, it, it depends on the different um, customs. So um, in Israel, in Israel, every morning, every morning, um, there is a birchat koanim. There's this, this prayer for the, the, the koanim come and uh, give their blessing. Also for Ashkenazim and Sephardim. In the diaspora, only the Sephardim do it every day. So if you go to that pink shul down the road, Linda, in, uh, on Park Heights, you will see in the morning that the Kohanim go up and they, they duchen. It's called, it, it's Yiddish. They say duchen, they give the bracha, the, the, the bracha of the Kohanim. But we don't, we don't say it in our silent prayer. And in Ashkenazi communities, we only do it on uh, Yontif. We only do it on Yontif. So we'll do it on, um, we will do it um, during the, the Musaf of Yontif coming up. Okay, so these three, Temple Service, Thanksgiving, and Peace, are basically the same for every Shmon Esrei, for every time we pray. And um, they themselves are called the section of Thanksgiving. So that, that's the main, that's the main uh, thrust, that's the main theme of them. In terms of just looking at the bigger picture, um, so if the first three, the, the patriarchs, divine might and holiness were about what, what's called shevach, praise, we're praising God, we say we, we're acknowledging who God is, um, the next, oh, and Kedusha, uh, then the next 12 or 13, once the, the one was added, um, they are all those are the middle ones. Those are called bakashot. Bavakasha means please, with pleasure. But a bakasha, a bakasha is a request. So these are the requests that we make. These are the middle, the middle prayers. And, um, and um, the last three are called hoda'a. Hoda'a means thanksgiving. Okay. Welcome, Dad. Can you see Dad in the background, everyone? Yeah. Oh, it's uh, very busy here today. Okay, so we're going. We're going to start with what's called temple service. So the words are like this. They are uh, translated <laughs> as well. So we should be able to. To. Um... Okay, Ritze. Ritze. So, mom, the phone. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Ritze, we, we mentioned last week, comes from the word ratzon. Um, 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 let's just go up a bit. Sorry, I've got to get used to this computer. So we mentioned... Um, when we said that in the last prayer we spoke about it, that the word uvaratzon it should be uh, it should be 
you should accept our prayers willingly, God. So this whole prayer, um, this next one, the whole prayer starts off with Ritzay. And the bracha, the bracha is known as Ritzay. This is, that's the name of the, the, the bracha. So we start off by saying, Ritzay Hashem Elokeinu Ba'amchi Yisrael Uvi Fi Latam. Ritzay means be pleased, God, be pleased, be, may it be acceptable um, to you. So as we mentioned when we, last week that in the, the word Ritzay comes from the word Ratz, to run, to run, and um, the, or, or desire, um, because people run to fulfill their desires. So we're basically saying, God, be satisfied, right? Pleased is a very generic term. Satisfied is a bit more specific. God, be satisfied with your people, Israel, and their prayers. Now, we have Pesach coming up in just a few days, right? Right? Never too soon. Just need to prepare in time, right? <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so Pesach is the story of God taking us out of Egypt. God did something very, in terms of history, something very risky, as it were. He took, he took the Jewish people to be his people, which means that right, history, world history, is going to revolve around the Jewish people. The, 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 that's really how it works. Um, so we are in covenant. We are in covenant with God. That is our relationship. This is the unique relationship we have with God. And we want, we say, God, of course, we are, we are we're delighted to be your people. You should be, you should be pleased, satisfied. Whatever purpose, whatever desire you had in bringing out the Jewish people, that should be realized. So that's really what we're saying. God, we've done all these prayers. We, we have asked you, for our, we, we've praised you. We've now asked you for all of our needs. Um, and now we turn around and say, God, be pleased with us. Be pleased with, have nachas, right? Jewish nachas. God, have nachas from your people, Amcha Yisrael. And and their prayers. So, in terms of this, the um, in terms of this, our our prayers are really an acknowledgement. Our prayers are, are really an acknowledgement of being God's people, being God's people. Um, the. Um, Okay, Let, let's see a little bit more and then I'll, okay. Vaha shave, shave is always to return, teshuva, same word. Vaha shave, return, et ha'avoda, the avoda. Now, let's see over here. Okay, be pleased, Adonai, our God, with your people, Israel, their prayers, and restore the service to the, the <laughs> service. Okay, so the word avoda. The word avoda comes, it means to serve. It comes from the word eved. It, it comes from the word eved. Um, eved is a, a slave. Um, so we, the, the service, the service that we, 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 we serve God with, we, we, we say, return the service, lidvir beisecha, to the Inner, how they translate into your abode. Okay, the word devir can be a, a, a resting place, a, a place for um, a place for to be to live. Um, so lidvir beisecha to the. I've also seen it translated as the um, to the to the dwelling place of your house. 
to the dwelling place of your house. So we're talking now about the temple in Jerusalem. And then we say, what will happen over there? The Ishe Yisrael, Ish is fire. Ishe are the fire offerings. So these are the korbanot. These are the sacrifices. Usvila sam and their prayers. So the sacrifices and the prayers be ahava in love to kabel. You should receive le kabel. Le kabbalah is is to receive beratzon. It should be satisfying. Um, okay, let, let, let's just see what we've said so far over here. So we've asked God. We start off by saying, God, be satisfied, be pleased with the, your people Israel and their prayers. The real way that we are, that we know that God is satisfied with our prayers is if God responds to our prayers, if he answers our prayers, and actually if he is able to um, if he restores his presence with us. So we'll see. Um, let's go here. The, the end of the prayer is, is over here. And, and may our v'sechazena v'techazena right? The word chazon <coughs> To have a vision, right? So the techezena, let our eyes behold, let our eyes, let, right? Einenu, our eyes, let our eyes view, beshuvacha, let it see, beshuvacha, your return, let's see on to Zion, to Jerusalem, barachamim, in mercy. So the, the real fulfillment or the way that we know that God is truly pleased with us is if he um, <coughs> abides, uh, ab if he makes his abode, if he, um, not abides, but uh, what's the word I'm looking for? If he lives with us, if his presence is amongst us, then you as, know. As you said, if he, does he restore his presence? If he restores his presence, exactly. If God restores his presence amongst us, then we know that he is pleased with who we are and our prayers. Um, okay. So let's just go back here. So we're saying, God, be pleased with your people Israel and their prayers and return the service to Jerusalem, to your, to your house, and the, the uh, sacrifices and the prayers lovingly you will um, accept. So um, according to most opinions, according to the Talmud for sure, according to most, uh, most authoritative, let's say rabbis throughout the ages, when the Messiah comes, one of his jobs is gonna be to rebuild the city of Jerusalem and the temple and re install the temple service we will once again offer sacrifices there'll be daily sacrifices there'll be um yontif sacrifices shabbat sacrifices individual sacrifices um there's one opinion which is the rambam maimonides in his guide to the perplexed it does not think that sacrificial worship will come back um, he thought that it was a little, it, it was a compensation or an alternate to pagan worship. And therefore he felt that the world is going to develop and uh, we will not need it again. By the way, if you ever meet a Bible critic and says, oh, well, you know, the Bible has slavery in it. Um, so the, the Rambam says clearly the, the reason why the Torah has laws about slavery is because it was given at a time when there was slavery in the world. Um, but it's not an ideal, it's not an ideal situation. So yes, there are laws how to treat a slave justly or kindly, which is an amazing thing. It does not mean that the Torah is 
condone, condoning or thinking that slavery is in a, 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 of itself an ideal um, situation. And that's part of the evolution of mankind that we develop morally. Um, so it's a question whether or not will we have the sacrifices or not. Our prayer, so over here, our prayer, we say, the Yisrael, the fire offerings, right? Um, the, 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 the fire offerings restore them. We ask God to restore them and, uh, and together with our prayers. Now, so according to those opinions or the, the Rambam, it, it's, it's difficult to understand why, you know, we're praying every day um, for the restoration of the sacrifices. So some say that the, the, the Ishe Yisrael means the internal fire, that a person, should, a person should not just pray verbally, but a person, a person should pay, uh, pray with passion. We should, there should be an inner fire. There should be inner fire and desire. This is a reference to that. This is a reference to the... Um, to, to the, the inner passion. So you, you could have whatever you, could have both intentions, whatever you think about is fine. Um, okay, what, and, and then what is important to note is that the sacrifices go together with the prayers. Now, the truth is that that was always the situation. That, that the sacrifices were accompanied with prayers. In fact, there were, there were um, special groups of, uh, of, of people, not only Kohanim, not only priests, but uh, Levim, Yisraelim, people that had to gather uh, during temple times. The people would gather in something like a synagogue, you know, in temple times when there were sacrifices, they didn't have the synagogues like we do. But people kind of did some sort of um, civil duty where they went and at the time when the sacrifice was being offered, the, 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 um, the daily offering, they would recite certain verses and say certain prayers to accompany the sacrifice. So the two always went together, and over here we are praying that the two again will go together. So we, I don't know if, the, if things work out the way that it seems over here, that the Messiah comes, rebuilds Jerusalem, and the temple service is reinstated. It's not clear whether we will still have shul synagogue in the way that we do today. That, that might all change. There might not, there might not be, be a need. For the you know the three times a day prayer, that might uh, that that could change. Um, so, um, okay, what what is the idea of a sacrifice? The idea of the sacrifice, so is um, says first of all, it's called over here avoda. It's called avoda, the, the the service, right? And we're familiar with this phrase. On, on, on three pillars, the, um, the world stands. On, on Torah, on service and kind deeds. So the Avodah is the service. It's, it's the prayer service. It's the sacrificial service. The Maharal of Prague says the, the word Avodah comes from the word Eved, which means slave but he says the real the connotation is is that you just like a slave belongs to his master so to we through our service that's really what we're doing we are acknowledging and stating making a declaration that we belong to Hashem right and that's the beginning of the prayer be pleased Hashem our God but Amcha Yisrael, your people Israel, your people Israel. Um, there's a beautiful Pirkei Avot. Now that we're in uh, Safari, we can get there quickly. Um, uh, 
Okay, three, seven, I think. Okay, so the, these are, this is Pirkevot, Ethics of the Fathers. Rabbi Elazar ben Batuta. There was Rabbi Elazar ben Batuta. He was a great sage. And he said, Tain lo mishalo. Give to him from that which is his. Sha'ata v'shalcha shalo. For you and that which is yours is, is, is his. Right? You're not doing such a great thing, says Rebbe Loza. Where did you get your faculties from? Where did you get your strength from? Where did you get your money from? From God. Give to him from that which is his. For you and that which is yours is his. Um, and that the, the Bartanura is a, a very, uh, sorry, Rabbeinu Yona, there's a very beautiful... Um, Commentary here from Rabbeinu Yona um, that says, um, uh, Give to him from that which is his. This is speaking whether, whether about the matter of a person's body, whether about the matter of a person's money, your faculties and your money. And it is to say that a person should not withhold himself nor is money from the from the objects or objectives of heaven. And this is what he said, for you, for you and yours are his. As you are not giving from yourself and not from your money, but rather from the omnipresent, from God's may be blessed, as everything is his. As a person's money is a deposit in his hand from the Holy One, blessed be he, except that there is an advantage with it over other deposits and that he can take from it according to his needs. And he should give the rest in accordance with the will of the depositor, the king, the king of kings, the holy one, blessed be he who commanded him. And there is much to rejoice in that he can benefit from the deposit. Um, in speech, the editor says it appears to me it should be correct, enough for his needs, right? And that he will do the will of his owner with the rest. A parable to a king who gave his servant a thousand zoos, a thousand dollars, and said to him, Take 100 for yourself and give the remaining 900 to nine people. Would he not rejoice? Right? So that's an interesting way to think about. You know, not only our money, but even all our faculties and, and, and strengths is that we are, um, it's a deposit. It's a deposit from the King of Kings. God has given us life. God has given us faculties. He's given us resources. And he said to us, listen, you can take, you know, it's a business trip. All expenses, pay, all expenses <laughs> paid. But you got to make sure that you do the business that's the main thing and number two is that you you know you, you don't abuse the all expenses paid part of it that's um that's the relationship so um let's go back to our prayer service Okay. Um, okay. So here we are. So that's what we really, we are saying to God. God, be pleased with your people, Israel, and their prayers. Now, if we think about our prayers in this context, it's the same thing. Uh, we, our prayers, we've just, we've just listened, we've just asked God for all our needs. And we are over here affirming with we're saying god our needs are your needs because we are working for you right these are the um you know it, it, it's the same thing right you're working for a big company and you want to make some investments for on behalf of the company you need to it needs to be budgeted in 
right? So you go to the manager or the, the, the owner of the company and you say, this is what we need to do. And this is how much money we need to do, you know, and I'll be in charge, I'll be responsible for that. So each pe person has to understand themselves as a corporation, right? You're part of a big uh, corporation and you're running a division, right? You're running the uh, Avraham Beard division. You're running the Linda Howitz division. You're running the Barry Musselson division. You're running the Justine Goldberg division. You're running the mom division, right? Um, and our prayers should be in that context. Um, again, as Rabbi Sachs so simply but profoundly says, it's not about I, it's about we, right? You have to, if you don't have that mindset, it doesn't make sense. What are these prayers? God, just give me more and more and more for my own self uh, gratification. God's not interested in that. Okay. Well, Hashem is Avoda, and God, ultimately, we want to do Avoda. We want to do service, which is the sign that we are, we are yours. By the way, the Hebrew word for a sacrifice is a korban, korban. The Maral of Prague says the korban comes from the word karev, to be close, right? To be close. By giving yourself or recognizing that you belong to God, you become very close to God. Right? That, that's, we don't want to, you know, it, it would be... Um, it would be debasing. It would it would be um, undignified to 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 give ourselves to to someone else to another person. Um, people definitely could relate to giving themselves to some a bigger cause to a country to 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 uh, to to, uh, to, um, to a cause within the country to give oneself up to God. One becomes very close to God. God, I'm yours. I recognize that. I'm yours. Whatever you've given me is yours. I'll use what I, you know, I understand I'm allowed to use what I, I need for, for myself and myself. I'll upkeep and health and, and everything. But at the end of the day, it's Avodah. I'm, I'm doing your service. So we ask God, return that they, together with action, the action of the sacrifices and the prayers that go along with it, right? So we're, 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 we're acting and we're speaking. God, please accept that. This should be what you want, right? God, this should be what you want. Obviously, <coughs> there's Torah and Gemilot Chasadim as well, right? There's, there's learning Torah. There's going out in the world and making the difference we need to make. Prayer is the meeting. Prayer is we're meeting with the with the managing director and we're discussing who we are and what we need. Um, and while we're there, we say, God, be please be 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 happy with what we are doing. Be be it should be of uh, should be of your pleasure. Okay. Um tamid, right? So tamid means constantly. There should be consistently. Um it should be a consistent. Your 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 your. Um, you should be consistently pleased with our service, with the service of your people, Israel. Now, on Rosh Chodesh Cholamoid, we say a a special prayer over here called um, Yalav Yavo. We will do. We will dedicate our next class to Yalav Yavo. It's an addition made on Rosh Chodesh and um, Yontif. Uh, but then the prayer always ends off on let our eyes see, let our eyes witness, let our eyes see the fulfillment of your pleasure, which would be you returning to Zion in mercy. And we finish off Baruch Atah Hashem. Blessed are you Hashem. Hamachazir Shechinato LeZion. Who returns, who returns his Shechina. The Shechina, we said, is the divine presence. Who returns his divine presence to Zion. Um, that, right, what does it mean to us? 
why is it important that God's presence is, is in Jerusalem, is amongst us? For one, it means that he's pleased. It means that he's pleased, he's satisfied with us as a people. Okay, questions, comments? What a question. Um, <clears throat> towards the end, you were saying about give to God what is God's. Now, does that apply to our talents? Of course. Okay, so a good, a good example that often puzzles me a little bit is in the 30s in America, there's a very famous singer called Al Jolson. And his songs were very, he was Jewish, songs were very uplifting. You know, they weren't religious, they were just very positive. And would probably were a very good thing at that time with the depression, if I'm correct about that. But he, he was from a Jewish family and I believe he started off as a cantor or his father's a cantor, but he decided to use this talent of singing, which he had to not to enrich himself necessarily, just to be able to sing to people. Now, what do we do you know, with our talents? I mean, can't they be, when you say give to God, can they be in a way of, that is not religious, you know, it's, a, it's, it's something that expresses yourself. God gave you the talent of singing, but you feel happy when you sing. So isn't that by expressing a talent, giving it back to God? Mm, well, I would think it depends on one's intention and also, you know, is it a force for good? You know, are, he, do, I don't know about him so much, but you know, are you, was he doing it for the sake of uplifting other people, for the betterment of other people? If he was, if he thought, wow, you know, I have a talent here and I can, I can help people, I can uplift them, I can give them a sense of joy, whatever music does, of course, why not? I've always, when I see a pop singer, right, I mean, I don't mean acid rock, I mean, and I see somebody expressing themselves and they're happy doing it, that is not just pure for the sake of being who they are. To me, that is a God-given ability that is giving and expressing, like a musician, is expressing themselves through something they love. It's a talent. What's fine, that is part of appraising God in a way because you're just being who he made you uh, yeah I've, you know that I think that's a very as you are Abraham artistic um that's a very you know that that's coming from an artist I, I think artists are you know I one of the weirdest people on earth has to be uh, Bob Dylan he's so strange I, I once want you know he's the only singer really that ever won a nobel prize he went he got the nobel laureate for for poetry i think they yes get. yeah 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 i was like who is this guy and i watched the i watched the interview of his and it was like used you it was like well i just had to do it that's who i am you know i, I just that's he was driven by this i need to just and it wasn't even such a, I need to, I just, I am, I just, that's who I am. I'm, I, that's my life. I, it, so I understood that there's something in, in a very talented artist. There is something to that. They, they're in touch with, I have something to express and give the world, you know, to express it in, in the world. Um, I don't know how far Bob's going to go in heaven. We'll see. You know, what did, it, what did all those songs do? Were they a force for good? Protest songs are so cool. <laughs> yeah, what a, you know, <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I'm more tending to think it needs to be focused consciously. Yeah. It can't just be, I have a talent and let me express it. I think it needs to be focused. You can, I don't, I don't think it's a difficult thing. To stop and think, where, where could my talent be of benefit to people? Where could, you know, 
after the Vietnam War, um, what's his name, uh, Bruce Springsteen, did a lot of work going around and, and playing for vets and, you know, musicians did that. I think in, in the wars, there were entertainers that went and, you know, entertained the soldiers and etc. So I think that's definitely a, that's the type of thing to me yeah. is what is most meaningful. Interesting, because I'm, at the moment, I'm doing a, a painting, my first religious painting of Moshe receiving the tablets. And I have to keep on reminding myself that what I'm doing is portraying something holy. And, you know, it's not a, just a painting. I can, can remind myself that I'm sticking my neck out and, you know, applying my talent or whatever to my expression of Moshe. It's not a literal expression. It's, it's a Kabbalistic one in a way, but it springs from that, you know. You've got to be aware all the time, as you say, that, you know, you are using it not for, not for a destructive or confusing way. Yeah, I mean, I, in a sense, I have that as a rabbi and a teacher of Torah to be aware that you know I'm on holy ground here. It's not yeah, just yeah, yeah. it's not a job like any other job. It's not it it needs you know a lot of honesty to make sure that I you know give a, as much as I understand, but you know a, a authentic proper message and. Um, to, to work hard to make sure that it's uh, as interesting, effective, insightful as it can be. Speaking of that, we did not get your Shabbos messages to this morning. Really? I did not get it. Really? Uh, some people definitely got it because I got some replies. Uh, yeah, look in it. your spam. It might have gone to your. Spam. I get it. I get it every Friday. <clears throat> I know, but sometimes I, I have this with people because I, I use something called Mailchimp, 